many of these questions, you can tell, are really questions to the general plan, et cetera, and um, are not always ones that Alan can, can answer. So he will do his best, and if he can't, then Greg will um, step up and answer. Evron? Barbara's had her hand up for... Thank you. Um, I'm Barbara Kellner. First, I want to um, thank TGP for hosting this and for um, Alan for that interesting description of your company and how it works in an integrated fashion, which reminds me very much of the way Jim Rouse planned Columbia. So uh, my question was, what elements of Town Center do you see as examples of good design that you would absolutely not want to change? That, that's a good question. As we look at the lakefront, I think there are, there's an attachment and there's a history and tradition associated with parts of that landscape, the sculptural elements and parts of that landscape that are so important to the community that I think they have cultural and I would even argue historic significance because of you know, standing for the center of the community. So I think the lakefront, if, if when one contemplates any changes or adjustments there, it's important to take a very close look at what I would call kind of the character defining areas of the lakefront, like the, the, uh, the kind of amphitheater terracing down to the water, the pier, the sculptural pieces, um, people tree and so forth. I think those have such emotional and cultural significance that those kind of define the character of Columbia. So I think any adjustments ha have to understand the significance of preserving those important areas and then what parts of the lakefront are less important that could be adjusted, for example, to achieve other objectives or to create more activity or whatever the objective is. So I think those are the import, most important zones from our point. Also, I think Meriwether Post Pavilion and that part of that setting is, is enormously important. However, we have worked on some new amphitheaters and as I look at the kind of basic infrastructure there of, that supports it, 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 it could be updated and improved to work better, but clearly that setting and that landscape is a very important part of the community because of just history and tradition associated with it. So I think those are two key areas. Okay, a question from a card. Um, and one I think is really addressed to you, Alan. What lessons have you learned from your experience with Reston Town Center that will make the Columbia downtown, that will make uh, Columbia downtown an even better place to live? So I think uh, one of the key findings uh, of Reston, and, and this received a lot of study in the planning stage, and that's the getting the right size and scale of these public spaces. I know earlier we talked about the woodland environments and walking through nature trails, but I think there's another kind of outdoor experience, and you get interesting moments of it at Reston. That, that has to do, and you, you can't find this in Columbia. That's walking down a street that has some interesting retail or restaurants on both sides. It's, it's appropriately sized and scaled. You pass other people. Maybe you have some outdoor dining on one part of it. But it's kind of what why people are attracted to some cities, to some neighborhoods, to some districts. Um, and I think it's getting that right kind of proportion, scale, activities at the, at the street edge to make an interesting urban environment. I, I, I would hope we've learned something from that to be able to make a good pedestrian environment, to avoid spaces that are too large, to avoid streets that kind of dissipate into parking lots, to avoid some of the you know, mistakes that have been made elsewhere. I think that's what we've learned about Reston is the continuity of, of uh, pedestrian experience. And, we, and it wasn't all right. And there were some, some streets there are basically just walking along parking garages. So there were some you know, missed opportunities there that wouldn't be done the same way today. Question from, or 
over here. You know, the connection of the lakefront to the mall is uh, an idea that we've tested a number of times over the last few years, and it is a formidable challenge. There's several, Little Patuxent is one part of it, and that's you know, dealing with, with the traffic and crossing, but there's also the topography. There's a significant grade change, and when you build today in the American urban environment, you have to have ADA accessibility, you know, very flat slopes. So just make, physically making that connection from the lake to the mall is a significant design challenge. I do think the, the topography in some ways is more of a problem than even Little Patuxent. I think there's ways to redesign a crossing on Little Patuxent that could effectively stop the traffic, that could allow timing for pedestrians by how you treat it, by, you know, there's ways to, make an improved crossing there. We're, we're not big fans of second level bridges because we find that people tend not to use those, so we'd rather solve it kind of at street level. But I think that the combination of the traffic and the topography have made that a, a, a significant design challenge that you know, we're still working on. Okay, and then um, this is a similar kind of question, I think. and. Um, it, it basically says, how will the, the mall, the mall being in the middle of the mall fortress be dealt with um, as far as a thoroughfare with uh, traffic? Do you propose um, adding a grid? I suppose this means a street, a street grid, more of a street grid to downtown Columbia. And one of the, uh, one of the biggest issues that downtown Columbia faces is uh, traffic and mm -hmm. the need to move it through. You know, the idea of having more choices on more streets with a, a grid in, in place and where you can implement it and allow the traffic to move, have more choices of how you move, will help circulation. I, by implication, I, I believe that's suggesting that grid maybe eventually extends to the mall. Is that what that's suggesting? Um, I think it just uh, basically says with the mall in the middle of town center right work? now, it okay. sort of interrupts okay. that. Th and that's true because it, uh, it does make for discontinuity to that grid. And what makes the grid work so well is you have all these choices and you can kind of have the option to take different routes and the mall disrupts that grid. So that is a problem. It's a challenge because it is a, obviously it's a very viable mall that, you know, it is going to interrupt the, a grid that you try to put in place. So but we overall, do see more of a grid in place. I think more streets that provide more choices for circulation will help the, uh, the traffic. Instead of putting all the traffic on just a few streets, it's kind of been proven elsewhere that that's been a pretty effective strategy. 